Okay, so continuing our feather slow stitch journal here. And if you guys want to get caught up to where we're at now, I'll put it on the end screen. You guys come check it out. There's a whole fun series for that. Okay, but now what we're going to do is take our cotton batting and I'm cutting it to size to put into and make a slow stitch journal with it. So I'm going to have batting pages bound into it and I'll show you guys how I cut them and then bind them in and this will be done. So what I'm doing is just taking my little cutter board here and lining that up. I need my cutters here, my rotary cutter, okay. And if you guys do not have a rotary cutter, you can just take it and draw a line here and then just cut it with your scissors. That would work too. So I'm just taking it and going like this. All right, so I measured it to size of what I wanted in my journal, like this. Make sure I have it up right. Okay. We might have to do some trimming on the side, but that's okay. For now, I'm just measuring how tall I want the pages. And I want a pretty good size, because then you can do some fun stitching on them. And yeah, and then we'll cut it to size on the width part when we're done. Just for now, I'm gonna get these all cut to this size. up. Mm, that's going to cut a little different, huh? But that's okay. Like I said, we're going to cut the ends anyway. So I don't know. That was brand new. I don't know why it has that cut in it like that. I don't know. But I think it should work here. So I'm just doing this, lining it up. how I do it. So we're just gonna line it on the line. I know I brought you guys up a little bit, but I don't know how far I can go up with you guys. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just kind of lining it up down here and making sure that it's straight then doing it this way and then lining up the line. And then doing a cut. Okay. So I think we're gonna do one more and then that will make it 12 places, 12 on one side of each thing, but it will make it 24 pages. So we'll let, let's see. Actually, let's just do this and then we'll see. We'll see where we're at. Okay. Line it up. Let's see. I get rid of my cutter or anything I'm gonna I don't really want the fuzzies on there okay so we'll go like this make sure it's upright okay so we'll definitely have to cut some of the side off here so I'm just gonna move it over to where I want it just like that and then what I could do I just go like this and then I will take just a little sharpie here and just do a little mark right here 
just a little mark because we're going to cut it off. You won't see it. Okay, so I was just making sure it's in wide enough. Whoop! I'm going to bump everybody. Okay, and then we're going to line it up. So what I'm doing is just lining it up on the line down here. Then I know that it's going to be straight. And then I'm going to make sure the black line is over onto the right side a little. So we can cut it off. Okay, so I'm just going on each side of the line. Hopefully these aren't too thick here. They might be too thick. If that's the case, just kind of go like that. I'll get it. I mean, we can always trim it with scissors if we need to. But this stuff is pretty fluffy. We'll just work our way through it. And just hold your ruler tight over here. There we go. There we go. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Move this out of my way. Shut my blade. Is just extra. I don't think I need that much. And let's see if this might be too much. Okay. You can just go through and see like how this one's a little longer. So you can just kind of cut it. So this is going to just be a fun stitch journal and I am going to put it in my Etsy shop so you guys can either, you know, come purchase it, of course, or even if you don't purchase it, if you come favor my shop or favor the uh, journal, that helps me out a lot. If you just come uh, do that, that gets it out further for other people to come check it out. I really appreciate you guys. Okay, so I'm just lining it up where I want it. Okay. And then we're just going to see how this looks. Oh my goodness. It's so fluffy and so fun. Like this is just cool to feel in my hands. I wish you guys could feel this. I mean, we got a, we got a stitch journal here. Is that cool? It's like pillowy. So that's a lot of stuff that you can stitch on. So let's count. Let's see here. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So depending on if you guys are just going to, when you do purchase this, if you're going to want to just stitch on one side right or you know like get your fabric and maybe you can do some stitching on the fabric or whatever you're going to do and then you can take it and glue it on here that's an option or you could take it and stitch it down onto here now what you'll have is stitches on this side showing so it's up to you if you want to you know stitch another one separate and then glue it down and then you guys could have 24 pages or you could stitch it on here and then just have this side just not you know with the back stitching showing so there's so many different options that you could do with this, but I just think it's so fun. So you guys either got 12 pages that you could stitch on or 24 front and back, okay? So that's not even really bothering me how it's all not perfectly straight. I think that gives it a lot of character and I love, I love that. We love character, don't we? Okay, so now let's get back to business here. So 
we just line it up where we want it. And what's cool about batting is it kind of just sticks where you put it. So like if you are gonna work on, you know, put your fabric down on top and do some stitching through, it's it's really nice just to have it just stick to it. Okay. Now let's get our clamps. I might need my big clamps, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my clamps here. And we just make sure that we have it where we want it. Clamp it. Make sure I'm just finding the middle here. having it bent so it goes into place here and then clamping it okay now, with a soft journal like this you just want to make sure that you when you are doing this you're hitting the middle here so I want to make sure my words can be seen on the front okay okay and I have some poly wax thread okay so you just take it and do it three times the height of the journal. One, two, three, and a little bit to grow on. Because I like adding beads and stuff, little danglers, just in case. Okay, and I have a big needle. And then I'm just gonna see if we can just pop it through. Right. Like that. And we're just gonna go, we're gonna go into the middle here and just find where the middle is. And we're gonna push it through just like that. And since it is batting, I mean, it seems like it wouldn't go through, but it's pretty, uh, can just kind of push it through there. There we go. And we're just gonna leave a tail in there. Okay. So I'm just making sure it's staying lined up. And then we're gonna I'm just put my hand on the inside. And I'm gonna pop it up towards the top, leaving about an inch and a half or so. And that's you know, or an inch, however you want to do it. And I'm trying to line it up to where the other one is. I think I can just go like this now, now that we got our center point, okay, and everything's pretty much in there. So you just find your center point, go up, and then I'm just spreading my fingers on the other side, on each side of the needle, and then just push it through. So we just get it through there. You just gotta kinda just work it in there. Okay, so we're pretty lined up. And we're just gonna pull it through. There we go. <clears throat> Make sure. Get my tail through here. Okay. And anything, if you do it too tight, you can just kinda pull it. Okay, so just make sure everything's the way you want it. Move everything out of the way. Okay. We're gonna go with two. Oh, that's why. So that's why you flip it over. I was like, I wonder, I had a longer tail than that. I got wrapped around the little hook. There we go. Now ah, we're working it. That's why these clips help. I mean, they do help, but then they hinder. But they help keep it so you can flip it back and forth over and over without everything flying apart. So I suggest clips. Okay, so there. It was wrapped around this one. 
got it like, like that. And now we're gonna go down to the bottom here. And same thing, you're gonna wanna about an inch up from the top and you're gonna line it all the way. It's easier this way. So there you are in the middle. Come down about an inch or so from the bottom and then pop it through. So it should be lined up here. You can keep looking at it and just make sure it's lined up. But worst case scenario, it doesn't, this is all fabric. You can pop it back out without having, you know, like paper already has a hole in it after you poke a hole. With fabric, you can readjust. So that's the good thing about fabric. Like I can undo it if it's not all straight or to my liking, you know. So you just pop it through. Oops, sorry guys. So this is a three hole pamphlet stitch. I'm not sure if I said that. Okay. And then we're just gonna go through the middle here. Try not to split our thread. Because if you go through and split the thread, it's just nearly impossible to tug all this way, you know, pull it all the way through. So just work it in there. You can see where it wants to pop out. Okay. So I'm just popping out right there. You guys can see that. it doesn't get wrapped around anything on the back here. So you just keep flipping it back and forth. So that looks pretty lined up to me. I don't mind that. Okay. And you can see these aren't like perfectly even, but that's the way I did the cover because I wanted the cover to go over a little bit more so you can see the words and stuff too. And I, I personally don't mind it. I think it, I think it just gives a little character. And that's, I think, the great thing about handmade, really. Okay, so if you want this longer, you just have to figure out which one brings that one through more. Okay, so I'm never gonna do that. Oh, well, see, I did kind of split the threads. See how I went through the other one right there? So what you're gonna wanna do is just kind of pop it back through. There we go. Here, we're done with that. So just pop it through so it's not split in the middle. So I'm just making my tails comparable here. So that's all you got to do is just pull one and then just keep pulling them like that. There we go. Now you're going to want them on either side. You have the one in the middle and then you have these two on each side like that. Okay, so yeah, that is a little bit <laughs> crooked, but that's okay. That's okay. There we go. I think that turned out really nice. You guys can see that. Kind of blends in. That's why I like it. And this wax thread, I mean, it's durable for sure. Okay, so we can go ahead and pop these off. Let's see where we're at. You can even go like this. Super happy with it. I mean, I, I think it looks great. So the cool thing is, is you can do bigger projects over here and then a little bit smaller ones over here. They're not really that off. It's not really that off center, but I think it, I think it looks good. Okay. I have it where the cover, I want the cover. So that was my goal here. So we're just gonna tighten it. And then leave that. And this is not going anywhere. We can also cut this too. You know, that is an option. Maybe we'll do that. Okay. So it just goes like this. You get it where you want it. And then you can have it so it ties like that. And we got ourselves a fun little stitch journal here, a slow stitch journal. I love it, I love it, love it, love it. Okay. So who knows, I might mess with that later and just kinda trim it to size here, just to give it a little bit of 
evenness. But then that's kind of fun. I think it's kind of fun to have a little bit of extra. You know, whoever purchases this can have a little bit of extra over here. So, and it doesn't seem to be interfering when I close it or anything. I mean, it kind of sticks out. So maybe I'll trim it just a little bit, but there we go. So now what I want to do is grab some of my fun beads and do a couple little dangles here. Okay, so I went ahead and I trimmed it just so it's a little more lined up like that. So they're still a little bit bigger, but not as much. So I think that turned out good like that. Okay, so now I got my beads here. I'm going to go ahead and get my fabric fix here. There we go. Fabric fix glue does wonders. All right, so I'm just gonna take my big bead here. look and see what I want to do here. Let's see, maybe I want to do a smaller one on top. I'm just going through both with the uh, thread here. If you want, you could tie a knot at the top and the bottom so it doesn't move. So let's see, we want it about there. So it just depends on where you want it dangling. Do a loose knot. that in there in a second. So that goes about there and then I'll just knot down here. And just a loose kind of knot because then it's bigger. If you do pull it too tight um, it'll just slip right through. So I'm just doing like a loose knot. Okay. And then I'm going to take my glue I'm just going to pop some glue into the hole here, then slide this back down, get it in there, and then the knot will just glue and harden in there and not go anywhere. Like that. And then we could just pop some glue here. ourselves a fun little stitch journal here just like that so the link will be down below my Etsy shop or the you know the link to the my Etsy link to the journal here will be down below so you guys come check it out and thank you guys for following along and I hope you found it informational and if you could please subscribe to my channel Hit the notification bell and you guys will see my next video when I post it. Like, comment, and share, and let's grow together. And keep on crafting.